So in the Hebrew and Christian scriptures, there's this whole phenomenon of God showing up in the world. Um, God shows up in the in in the Garden of Eden. God shows up in um, the burning bush. Uh, in the prophetic tradition, God speaks through the prophets' voices, right? And the Christian scriptures, of course, God shows up big time in the person of Jesus, God, Jesus as God. And this whole idea of and uh, of of God showing up in the world is fascinating to me when I think about holy spaces, about there being a particular space that is more holy than another, which is such a common thing in religious life, right? There is uh, Mecca for uh, for Muslims in in uh, Jerusalem for Jews and Christians and Muslims. Uh, but for us Unitarian Universalists, yes, there are places that are 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 full of history and tradition, but there is not one particular place that that is really the embodiment of the holy. Just as we don't have one scripture, we don't have one spiritual practice, there is an understanding that this is all part of the search for truth and meaning that is a part of all of our religious lives, that we find the holy in the world, that each person finds that in a different way. And so I wonder what that is for you. I'm going to lay out two possibilities of how I experience the holy showing up in the world. There's the on the one hand there is holiness just taking us by surprise where we you know go to some place we've never seen before and we are surprised and amazed by the beauty, the majesty, the holiness that is with us while we are in that place. So my latest example of this is a couple weeks ago, I was in Washington, D.C. with a couple hours to kill before I had to fly out of town. And I went to the National Mall, which I really, for all purposes, had never been to before. And I saw signs for all of these different museums, you know, along the mall. And and I had to choose one. I really only had time to go to one. So I saw a sign for the National Gallery of Art. And for me, that's a no-brainer. It's like, of course, that's where I'm going to go. And so I found my way there. And the first miracle was that I just walked in, that I just got in free. And then I started wandering and was just amazed at what I was seeing. I, I, and then I was... And then before I knew it, I was I was totally lost. There were wings in this. I, I was just totally disoriented and turned around. And yet, and yet to be lost in this place was a miracle in and of itself because I would turn a corner and there would be a statue by Rodin and there would be a painting by Rubens and Monet. And, and then I remember I turned this one corner and there was this painting, the f- family of Saltimbanques. It's Picasso from the, it's an early painting from the Rose period. Anyway, I know this painting so well and love it. And I just burst into tears to actually see the real painting. So really to be lost in the National Gallery of Art, to get in free, to see all these amazing works of art. I, this is all I can imagine that heaven could be like, this feeling of of being disoriented and yet completely found and amazed and uh, delighted. So that was my experience at the National Gallery of of Art, being surprised by by the holy. And, And then there's another category of experiences where... These are the places that we return to. These are our go-to holy sites. These are the places where we know and love. Chances are we've been there time and time again. Uh, For some people, it's a particular building. It could be a church. It could be a certain part of town. It could be a forest. It could be a national park. It's these special places that maybe you went to time and time again as a child. Um, But we are... 
moved to the sacred when we are there. And it's part of what draws us there, is to be able to return to that experience of the holy. So for my husband, and for me too, but really especially for my husband, it's Mount Rainier. He goes there every summer, and he goes wilderness camping for, it could be three to five days. And it really is like a pilgrimage for him, going there every summer. And it's about being filled up. It's about being immersed in in beauty, in the most beautiful place that he knows, and the place that touches his heart so that he is really, his heart grows when he's there. It grows in hope and in faith and in love when he's there. And he comes back with all of that. So I wonder what it is for you. What are the sacred sites? Where do you find the holy in the world? And how do you bring it into your life? Are there places that you go to? Do you create it in your own home? How does the holy come to you? Mm -hmm.